We're going to be putting um, the cap on <laughs> someone's head and then teaching people how to adjust um, red channels and how we move the hair out of the way to get better signal in F nears. So when we put on the cap, we usually have um, two RAs with a participant put it on and we have one RA hold um, the front of the cap to get it centered and the other RA pull the back of the cap. Okay, hold um, but for purposes today, at me, the participant's just gonna hold it here. Okay. Yes, and then if there's any folds or bunching of the cap, um, the RA will just smooth it out, pull it down, make sure the cap is all the way secure and against the scalp, fold down as far as it can go. So when putting it on the cap, um, it's important that the FC and CZ is centered with the participant's nose. So um, making sure that it's centered and look, using the yellow center um, slit circle on the cap is centered. That means the cap is roughly in the right place. And also you'll always take the measurements of the cat, the inion and nasian, so ear to ear, and then from nose to the back of the head. Okay, I'll check the signal right now. Oh, so now she is checking the signal by running the signal optimization. Um, when this window pops up, she's gonna hit continue. Um, and we're gonna just let it load and this is gonna tell us if um, the signal is ready for data collection. So any channel that is green is an excellent signal. Um, acceptable signal will be yellow and then critical signal will be red. So if there's any acceptable or critical signals, um, Ying will adjust them on my cap um, and then she'll re rerun signal optimization to try to see if the signal is fixed. When after she runs signal optimization, um, the channels that are red, they're in critical signal, like no signal at all. And then there's acceptable signal, which is yellow, but we would like excellent green signal. So once um, she runs optimization and sees which channels don't have any signal, she'll then go to the optodes and take them off, the spring topper off first. Um, and then the optode itself, she'll hold the optode in one hand as well as um, use her fingers to hold the hole or the slit against the scalp. And then in the other hand, she will use a crochet hook to part the hair and expose the scalp. Because um, a lot of the issues with signal is hair blocking the way. That's why a lot of times in the parietal areas, um, people have thicker hair, that's why there's no signal. Um, but something that she is careful not to do is use the back of the crochet hook so she's not hooking hair and pulling it out of the hole because then it gets tangled and it hurts the participant once you take the cap off. Um, but it is important that you use the back, the smooth side of that hook to part the hair. Okay, so now we're going to show an example. If you accidentally do um, your crochet hook, hook some of the hair and pulls it out of the cap, um, we are going to show you how like to fix this, that right? issue, yeah, because it, it can happen on accident. Um, so what Ying is about to do is to get the hair back in there so it doesn't tangle or it doesn't block the optode from um, making contact with the scalp. What she does is she uses the hook side of the crochet hook and goes under the cap and finds the hair that is pulled out and then just hooks it back into place and tries to make sure that it doesn't say sit and bunched on the scalp, but smooths it out so it doesn't um, affect the signal of any other optodes and signals aren't being pulled away from the scalp. So it's important that once she pulls it back in that she's making sure the hair is smoothed against the head. What we usually do if it takes more than 15 minutes to fix, so if she checks the signal after this and it's still bad. She'll probably do it one more time, but if it takes more than 15 minutes, we usually just um, continue with data collection because we don't want to keep the participant here too long, especially when we're dealing with children. Their patience is thin. So yeah, again, we can't check the signal in real time, so now we're gonna have to rerun signal optimization. So we're going to see rerun it to see if those channels have been fixed.
Yay. So it looks like Ying fixed all of them. We do have one um, acceptable on the frontal area um, on the right side. So something that she can also do right now, the spring toppers that are in my frontal area are um, all with tension zero. So because I don't have a lot of hair, something that she can do is to get a higher tension spring topper and go to spring, maybe start with spring one or spring two. And what this is, is just pushing a little harder on the scalp to make sure it's making contact. You can see in my head, more of the frontal spring toppers have a zero on top of them. This just means that there's no tension, so there's no spring that's pushing down against my head. And the reason for that is I don't have any hair on my forehead or I have less hair in those frontal areas. So it's easier for the optodes to make contact with the scalp. But in regions that have thicker hair, it might be helpful to use a tension one, two, or three to really make sure that spring is holding down the optode and it's making contact with the scalp. Okay. Um, so if, as you if you accidentally pulled hair out of the hole of the optode, and even as you are trying to fix it and pull it back in, if you have some straggle hairs that you couldn't get back under the cap, that's okay. Just when you're pulling off the cap at the end of data collection, make sure you take off the spring topper before you pull off the cap. Otherwise, it will rip the hair and it will be uncomfortable for the participant. Um, so just be cognizant of that um, if you see that some hairs are left out. Okay, now let's pull it off it. Okay, cool. And hold this two sides. And then pull the front and then just slowly take it off. 